Okay, um, we are back this afternoon. We are planning on seeing if there's a motion for an executive session, after which we'll take up, uh, if we do an executive session, we'll come back and we'll do the enforcement motions and issues, and then um, Mount of Scotty. So I'm prepared to make a motion on going into executive session. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that now. I. I think in the past, Mike has sort of reviewed the rules, so I didn't know if that should happen before or after my motion. So I just wanted to ask your preference. Defer to Mr. Barber. I think it'd be, I think it'd be good for the public and for for others to just have me do that now. Um, so. Uh, this is all set out in uh, one VSA three thirteen. Um, that statute allows the board or any public body to hold an executive session to, among other things, consider confidential attorney-client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the public body provided the public body has made a specific finding that premature general public knowledge of the communications would clearly place the body at or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. Um, so that's the standard. Uh, in terms of process, a motion to go into executive session must indicate the nature of the business of the executive session and no other matters may be considered in the executive session. No formal or binding actions may be taken in the executive session with certain exceptions that are not applicable here. <clears throat> uh, the motion to go into executive session must be approved by two thirds of the members present. Um, the public body does not need to take minutes of an executive session, but if, uh, if it does, then those are exempt from public inspection and copying under the Public Records Act. And in terms of attendance in an executive session, it's um, it's limited to members of the public body. And in the public body's discretion, uh, the, the public body staff, clerical assistants, legal counsel, um, and any persons who are subjects of the discussions or whose information is needed. Again, that's at the discretion of of the body. So any questions about that before Robin makes a motion? Okay, so seeing shaking heads, no, I will make a motion. Um, in fact, I will make two motions if the first one passes. I move that we find that premature general public knowledge of confidential attorney client privilege I'm sorry, attorney client communications regarding the objections raised by hospitals with respect to the fiscal year 25 hospital budget process and fiscal year 23 budget enforcement process would place the board at a substantial disadvantage in any dispute that may arise out of these processes. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I, thank you. I now move that we go into executive session to consider confidential attorney client communications regarding the objections raised by hospitals with respect to the fiscal year 25 budget processes and the 23 fiscal year 23 budget enforcement processes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and the motion carries. Um, in terms of attendance, I believe it should be the board. Council to the board, um, Director Barraby. Is there anyone else, Mr. Barber, that you think should attend? Okay, okay then we will, um, uh, Maggie, go off the record and we will go into executive session. It's always hard to predict how long these will take. Um, it could be, I'm gonna guess, an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. So 
probably around 230 will be the goal to come back here, but that that could be extended depending on um, how, how quickly it goes. So we will take a break and move to executive session. We can go off the record, Maggie. Off the record. Um, next, we'll take up the enforcement motions and then Mao Ascutney. Um, Mark, if you have the slides. Yeah. I'm going to pull those up right now. And let me get to the right slide here. We're going to uh, start with the one that includes a proposed change, um, but I'm going to give it to you as the um, the motion as taken up uh, uh, at, at the prior deliberative session. So this is the enforcement language for Rutland that was taken up. You'll see as a reminder uh, in blue the items that have been uh, modified by the omnibus motion that was um, approved earlier today. Um, so this is the current language of the motion as it exists. And what I'm going to show you next is the motion with a uh, with two small changes that I'll explain. Um, the first one is very minor, but I, I did want to do it. So with the other enforcement motions, I had used the word deviation rather than violation. Both terms are used in statute for the taking of corrective action for a deviation or violation of an order. Um, I want to use the word that signals as clearly as possible that this is not a punitive action and that, as we've discussed in prior settings, this is an attempt to enforce budget such that they um, uh, to to enforce in such a way that that uh, we have a corrective action that that uh, in, ensures uh, you know kind of the consistency and goals of of the the board and its duties. So I'm just using the term deviation here so that we have the same language throughout. And so it's it's the honestly kindest word that exists in statute to to communicate what's happening. Um, the uh, the other um, item that I want to flag is a change to um, the percentage. So the initial motion was a um, reduction in FY25 overall change in charge and commercial negotiated rate from 2.8 over current approved to 0 0.8 under current approved, meaning negative 0.8. Rutland in its objections flagged a mathematical error that um, was corrected previously elsewhere, but which flowed down to the 0 0.8. So what we did is we went ahead and corrected that figure to the 0 0.4 under or negative 0 0.4 to correct the, the, the math error. Um, so that's what this new motion language does is it, it just gets us to, um, as I understand Rutland's objection, uh, gets us to a figure that is representative of the um, math issue that that Rutland noticed us about. And and so, Mark, this would be if the board were to take enforcement action on the deviation. At, um, I believe the staff recommendation was fifty percent of the total overage. Is that right? So that and that would get you to point four under. And then the board, as I understand it, is able to um, take enforcement over multiple years. And have we done math to look at it over a two year period? Yep, my understanding is that we've got that got that done. Um, I don't have those figures in front of you or in front of me, but um, you can pull them up if you if you need them. Um, yeah, if you don't mind. Give me one moment. I'm not sure. 
uh, if Elena is on, but. I am. Um, I can share. This. So this takes the I'll just walk you through the spreadsheet so you know what you're looking at. Can you see? Can folks see this? Yes, okay. although I can't see which hospitals which. All right, so we will. Here we go. Things. Okay, so we have the 23 budget, 23 actuals. So that's how the budget orders are written. Um, column B is the 24 commercial NPR. So that's the base that you grow the commercial um, rate due to price from. So that gets us all to the same um, metric. Um, so we first, this column E looks at the difference between budget versus actuals and then calculates in column F the amount that NPR is over. So you should have those um, figures from previous presentations. The enforcement recommendation is in column G. So it was presented previously as zero, 50%, 50% and um, enforcement in full. So if we're talking about Order. We're here on row 12. Um, the enforcement recommendation amounts to 11.4. Sorry, I think we're on. I think we're on Rutland. Oh, I'm sorry. Rutland um, okay. amounts to 3.3 percent, um, and the two year is 1.6 percent reduction. Yeah. yeah. And then the board approved. Amount for fiscal year 25 for Rutland was 2.8. Right. And if my math is correct, if the board were to enforce over a two year period, the net result for fiscal year 25 would be 2.8 minus 1.6 or a 1.2 positive rate. Yeah, so I had this, yeah, so I wouldn't pay attention to these columns. These are, this was quick math. <laughs> so we'll hide those. Um, yeah, so I think we'll have to do the addition. Yeah, you'll have to take 1.6 away from the, the approved amount in the previous one. Okay. Um, you put up the motion, Mark. Um, so I had made this motion, um, although I would like to modify it. And uh, before I make the motion, I'll explain why I would like to modify it. Um, one, um, I, I, I want to engage in the invitation from a number of hospitals to uh, collaborate and work together to get prices affordable and to make healthcare affordable for Vermont. And I think it's beneficial to have an additional period of time to deal with the overage for the hospital. Um, and spreading out the enforcement over two years would do that and would give them an opportunity to adjust budgets and expenses. I think it's important to enforce the orders because the orders provide certainty to the broader state and market as to how much money will be spent on a particular hospital in a particular year. They are binding orders. The statute reads that hospitals shall comply with them. And part of the reason why we have budget orders is to control the expense growth, which is very important. If expense growth continues, Vermont will remain totally unaffordable for healthcare. And under 9371, that's an important consideration that the board has to make. And so I do think it's important that we enforce the budget orders um, for that reason. However, I want to recognize the transformation work that's been going on and all the effort that everyone's put in towards that and will soon be putting in even more. And so I wanted to provide a two-year period for enforcement. Um, I also think that enforcing at um, a lower rate, a 50% rate, 
is reflective of what Rutland submitted to the board in terms of its information as to why we should not enforce. I don't think it was unforeseen or unexpected that they had an overage, um, but I do recognize that there was a lot of Medicaid patients and that historically Rutland's done uh, taken a number of steps to control costs that are very important. So that's why I would recommend that we do do only a 50% enforcement and not in full, and that we spread it out over two years. Um, so having said that, I just want to explain to the board members why I'm going to make an adjustment to the motion, and then I'll open it up for any comment. Um, I move that we find that Rutland Regional Medical Center's performance differed substantially from its fiscal year 23 budget. I move to deny Rutland Regional Medical Center's application for retroactive adjustment of its fiscal year 23 budget and move to enforce this deviation by reducing the fiscal year 25 overall change in charge and commercial negotiated rate increases from 2.8% over current approved levels to 1.2% over current approved levels with no commercial rate increase for any payer exceeding that amount and with a 1.6% reduction for fiscal year 26 off of the amount that is ultimately approved. I'll second. And I'll open it up for board member comment and discussion. I have a question that I don't expect to be answered now, but I thought I would ask it now. Um, which is so how with the we ha I haven't done or experienced to your enforcement, so I'm just curious if anyone has thoughts on how that works next year. If there is again an enforcement action, which I just looking at projected looks like could happen with Rutland. Again, not expecting any sort of comment or uh, suggestion now, just curious as to what the thinking is. Um, I, I don't mind responding a, a little bit off the cuff with a high level response, which um, so the motion I made would um, table that 1.6% enforcement on this till next year. And we'll see where the numbers are in the fiscal year 26 budget. We'll approve that budget consistent with the statutory obligations. And then the 1.6 would be applied to that. And in terms of Rutland's projected for 25, uh, 24 being high, um, there's certainly opportunity and invitation to Rutland to um, address that sooner rather than later. Thanks. Any other board comment or discussion? Okay, I'm going to, at the end of these motions, I'll table all of them. Um, so I'll open this up to public comment. The motions I'll move to table later and we'll keep public comment open on the new uh, revised motion. Uh, Ms. Bertrand. Good afternoon. Um, I just would request if we could just a little bit of time, and I know we're limited in, in terms of time, to be able to internalize the numbers and just have some of that information if Elena would be willing to send it over to us so that we can just um, run some of those calculations ourselves. That would be fantastic. Not a problem at all. We can We can certainly do that. Any other public comment on the motion? Okay, we can go to the next one. And here you have uh, language again as uh, taken up by the board with the modification in blue that relates to the omnibus motion voted on earlier today.
similarly with this motion, I wanted to amend it as well. Um, again, recognizing that Vermont healthcare is not going to improve without working together and really recognizing the affordability challenges we have and in, in doing something about it. And part of that is complying with these budget orders so that expenses don't go high. I know there's been a lot of comment about utilization versus price understood and recognized, um, but at the end of the day, it's the amount that people have to pay that is making it unaffordable. And again, consistent with our healthcare reform goals, we're trying to ensure that um, population health initiatives and work are being successful and that we are being mindful of the systemic barriers to accessing care, given the uh, crisis in affordability in Vermont. Um, but I, I want to take to heart what UVM had said, and they said a number of times they wanted to collaborate and work together. And I think we need to. And part of that would be to allow them more time um, to address and redress the additional commercial price that was put in in fiscal year 23 that ultimately proved unnecessary to hit their budget. Um, the other thing I would say, and this is a little perhaps informal or off the cuff, but um, there are issues that I think UVM and the board can work together on to make the budget process work more smoothly. Um, there's a couple of things that were noted by staff, by UVM and their process, and there's different views on both sides from the regulator perspective and the regulated that can make it better. And I am going to informally suggest that um, if I if we if this motion is approved and ultimately voted on to spread it out over two years, that we get together for year two and talk about whether or not there's an opportunity to put things in place that will make the budgeting process go more smoothly. And so the board has more um, confidence and perhaps UVM as well in the outcome. And what I'm alluding to in that is going back to a comment made this morning um, by, uh, I think it was Mr. Wooden, um, I think there needs to be an audit. I think we need to understand um, where all of the money is flowing, some of the board concerns about um, the variations in the budgeting. I think we'll all be better off if there's an independent third party look at some of these things and ensuring that some of the numbers um, are consistent from process to process. So I'm just going to put it out there. I don't want to raise any temperature on this. So I'm going to reach out probably to UVM informally, maybe with others, if there's an appropriate process to do that, to talk about if there's a submission that could be made uh, as part of the year two enforcement if this motion were to pass. Um, Mark, do we by chance have this slide? Or actually, Elena, could you give me the numbers for what the enforcement amount would be if it were spread out over two years? Yes. Um, so the enforcement amount spread over two years would be 5.4 divided by two, negative 2.7 percent. Okay, and what that would mean, I think if my math is right, maybe just check me. The board approved a 3.4 for 25. I'm and then sorry. I need to do this. I'm sorry, I used the wrong column. This is, I'm double checking. So I have eight. I'm sorry, it's a negative 4.4. Yeah, in full because it's 80, so it's negative 8, so negative 4.4. I'm sorry, I divided the combined. Um, so a two year would get you to negative 1 overall. Uh, I just want to make sure. Yes. I'm putting, putting you on the spot. I apologize. So um, if the board were to enforce in full in one year, it would be a little over $80 million, and that would result in a minus 5.4 off of, Com yeah. Combined with the earlier recommendation. So the 80 million is equivalent to a negative 8.8%. If you divide that in half, so you're 
spreading that over two years, that would be negative 4.4%. So if you take the negative 4.4% from the already um, approved 3.4% guidance, that gets you to a negative 1% for FY25. And then 4.4% for 26. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I move that we find that UVM MC's performance differed substantially from its fiscal year 23 budget. I move to deny UVM MC's application for retroactive adjustment of its fiscal year 23 budget and move to enforce this deviation by reducing the fiscal year 25 overall change in charge and commercially negotiated rate increases from 3.4% over current approved levels to 1% uh, under current approved levels with no commercial rate increase for any payer exceeding that amount. And for the remaining 4.4% uh, correction to the deviation to be enforced in fiscal year 26. I'll second. Is there any board member discussion? Um, and I'll open up to public comment. And I saw Ms. Peek Lee raise her hand. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Foster and board. I know it's been a long day for um, everyone. I do appreciate you taking the time to really look at the impact that a negative rate will have on patient care. I do have concerns of the even the reduced negative that we have patients already in schedules, already seeking care, and a negative rate increase is certainly going to have a significant impact on that. But I do want to recognize and express my appreciation for looking to spread over two years to try to um, minimize some of that. I would ask that we continue to look at how any enforcement is um, put forward in terms of negative rates, as well as visit again the um, determination that was made to make the decision. I do recognize that we're all looking at the cost of health care. I also look at the need to provide care. And when we came off of FY22 and a significant loss, how do we manage a loss, but also do as the board requested and as the community needs, which was expanding, um, expanding our access and the deviation from budget as I had submitted in writing was by no means anything intentional. It was truly the result of a significant amount of hard work to open up access. Additionally, you can see that the margin for UVMMC did not benefit significantly from that. So we really did use those funds in patient care and therefore there's not excess funds available. And I do look at the impact of this in the future. So thank you for hearing me and I do appreciate the work that you all do. Thank you for your comment, Ms. Peakley. And we likewise appreciate the work that you all do and recognize all the hard work that goes into making the budgets um, and, and testifying and following up. It's an incredible amount of work. And so I thank you for that. Um, part of we're, we're not taking away the money through this motion, just to clarify, it would be to lower rates in the future so that there is more room for access without um, really impacting the affordability side, not to take money back um, for sure for patient care that's been provided. Thank you for your comment. I look forward to continuing to work with you. Um, Dr. Leffler. Record and say that this action will hurt from honors. That net overage was from utilization, and we actually lost money on it. Every day at the medical center, we try and walk an extremely fine balance between caring for everyone who needs us, 
our local community and transfers, paying fair and competitive wages, dealing with up to 70 people a day who are in the hospital who don't need to be here, and trying to manage affordability for Vermonters every day. We made that overage in 23 because we cared for more people who needed us. And we actually lost money doing it. We paid travelers and overtime and special pay to have people be seen. We will have to take actions based on, the, on this projection for 25 that will limit access to Vermonters going forward. I can't imagine this is the right way to help healthcare in Vermont. We are completely committed to helping to work on affordability, but giving us a negative margin in 25 will reduce our services. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? Um, um, I believe there's Porter next. do see one raised hand, which I'm happy to just wanted to flag that for you, Chair Foster, before I move on. Oh, uh, yes, that's fine. Um, Mr. Boynton. Hi, thank you. Um, this could probably wait till after Porter because it's based on all three um, potential enforcements. The I do worry being a small state that even though um, you create an enforcement, you're really gonna not improve affordability at all. Um, you will decrease local access, but patients are smart enough to leave the state for care. So I hope uh, hope that's recognized. Thank you. I do not think this will improve affordability. Thank you for your comment. Um, do you have Porter? Yep, pulling it up right now. Um, I also wanted to move the board members um, to make an adjustment on the Porter uh, enforcement. Um, I'll explain what I would like to do and why, and if board members have discussion, we can hear it and then see if there's um, see if there's a motion that's appropriate. On Porter, I would like to not enforce at this time. Um, my reason for that is that uh, I thought that they made um, an important showing regarding the volume, one. Two, their financial position is quite a bit different um, than, say, Rutland. Three, their prices are quite a bit lower. They're not in the 10th decile or 9th decile or even 8th like some of the others. Um, there's also... Uh, I don't know the degree to which the support is there for Helen Porter, but but there is. And uh, the CEO provided information earlier this week about the projected 24s um, being consistent with what he's seeing in the um, the remainder of the year, which was a fairly deeply negative um, operating margin. I'm sorry, um, NPR. I think in the projected 24s, which I believe are through June, they were running at minus 4% below their revenue. And uh, I believe Mr. Ortmeier said that the trend for the rest of 24 looked similar. And so given that, and that we don't know where 24 will um, sugar off, uh, I propose not taking action on the Porter enforcement at this time. I think that's a good use of our discretion and um, that's what I would propose doing. So I will make a motion and then we can have board member comment and discussion. Um, but I move that at this time, the board not take action on Porter's uh, potential enforcement for its overage in fiscal year 23. Second. And is there board member discussion? Um, I'll open it for public comment. Um, and this motion will likely be open until uh, Friday as well for other public comment. All right, with that one done, 
going to turn us to the last motion language for the day, which concerns Mount Escutney. And it's about 320, but I'll do my best to cogently explain what's here and what's in the next slide, which is a um, new proposed motion language. So as with other motions, this motion language is what the board picked up um, in prior deliberative session with modifications under the omnibus uh, motion that was voted on today. This was a um, motion to approve the budget as submitted. And the motion language states that Mount Escutney's 3.2 NPR and 2.2 commercial were as were submitted by the figures submitted by Mount Escutney. The new motion language uh, attempts to clarify um, that this is actually a, a little bit different from from what's presented as here. Um, Mount Escutney wrote uh, with an objection uh, recently um, and explained that its initial request was 4.3% NPR and that the way that the staff got to the 3.2 was by, as I understand it, uh, taking out a um, expectation for an approved CON, which was pending at the time of the budget submission for Mount Escutney. Um, this motion language does not change, you'll notice, the 3.2 or the 2.2. So this new motion language does not change the board's decision, but it clarifies and um, attempts to address the fact that Mount Escutney did come in with a 4.3 initially, which included that, that CON expectation. So this is not an approval of the budget as submitted. Instead, it's an approval of the budget with modifications, that modification being the reduction to NPR. And Mr. Hinksler, the the guidance NPR rate was 3.5. That's correct. Right. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make a motion slightly different from the text in front of us, and we'll see if there's a second and then discussion. Um, but I move to approve Mount Escutney's budget with modifications as follows. With fiscal year 25 NPR approved at a growth rate of not more than the guidance level of 3.5% over its 24 approved budget reduced from 4.3 and a commensurate reduction in operating expenses. With fiscal year 25 overall change in charge and commercial negotiated rate increases approved at no more than 2.2% over current approved levels with no commercial rate increase for any payer exceeding that amount and subject to all other standard budget conditions as approved by this board. I'll second. And board discussion. I don't really have discussion. I just need to look back at my notes. So I'll do that before Friday. Any other board members? And I'll open it to public comment. Um, Ms. Pitts. Thank you, Chair Foster and Green Mountain Care Board. Um, and thank you for the summary. This is that that is pretty much what had happened. The uh, CON um, revenue and expenses were removed from our submission. However, since then we did receive approval for our CON, and um, so I I guess you know we are asking that you reconsider and keep us at the 4.3 percent. And um, I did note that when we received the statement or the statement of decision. One of the findings, it did note that the project meets CON standard 3.4, which requires applicants subject to budget review to demonstrate that a proposed project has been included in hospital budget submissions or explain why including was not feasible. And then another item noted was that the, uh, that the, the costs included met the second criteria of reasonable cost. So we feel that disallowing it at this point uh, 
does not seems to be at odds with what the CON had approved. So we respectfully ask that you reconsider. Thank you for your comment, Ms. Pitts. And, and um, one other thing I would just like to add is that the 2.2% does not change, which is that was what would actually end up going back to Vermonters. Thank you. And we'll end up voting on this motion, I, I presume on Friday. Thank you. If I get a motion to table here. Any other public comment? Um, with that, I would like to make a motion for the to table the um, the changes that were made from the prior motions that were um, introduced. So I move to table the following motions until the board's meeting on Friday, September thirteenth. One, the hospital, uh, the Copley Hospital budget. Two, the NMC hospital budget. Three, the Porter hospital budget for the Mount of Scutney hospital budget, five, the UVM fiscal year 23 enforcement, six, the Rutland 23 enforcement, and seven, the fiscal year 23 Porter enforcement. Second. Is there any public comment on the motion to table? All right, and again, the board will keep public comment open on these motions that were introduced today. And thank you everyone for participating in today's hearing and providing comment the last several days. All those in favor of the motion to table say aye. 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 And the motion carries. Um, I don't have the agenda up, but if my memory serves, that should be about it for today. Is that right, Mark and Elena? I believe so. Yep. That's it. Yep. Okay, great. Um, then with that, I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, thank you, Mark, Elena, Emma, Noah, Janelle, Mike Barber, um, all of the staff. Um, really appreciate it. And thank you very much, Maggie. We are adjourned.